yes, now we are heading to the lightning talks, uh, which will take us through up to the top of the hour. We have four lightning talks going on today, uh, in which we will start. Uh, which will start in a few. So just um, so just a reminder, I'll be timing, and uh, each lightning talk will be taking like uh, five minutes. So when you do hear a beeping sound, uh, just know that your time is up. And I'll also let you know when it's uh, you have a minute left so that you can be able to start wrapping up. And uh, without further ado, uh, we'll be starting off with uh, Debbie uh, from Partners in Health. And I uh, hope, Debbie, you're ready. I am. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. OK, uh, I'm sharing my screen. Are you seeing power, uh, PowerPoint? Yes, I can see your PowerPoint and uh, let me know when to start my timer. Uh, great, you can start. Um, okay, so I just wanted to share a bit about how we're thinking about planning for data use as we plan data collection. Um, we've been, um, as part of our strategic planning, we've been talking with our clinicians and improving our understanding of um, the way that they want to use EMR data um, for, they, they would, they know data is being collected and they really want timely, actionable reporting to guide their work in clinical program improvement. Um, they, they know that they're not always able to align um, priorities for training, staffing, supply chain management, community health um, around the evidence of the data that we have. So they want that to be easier to do. So looking at um, a typical way that we design our OpenMRS systems at Partners in Health. Um, we use as uh, an important guide um, paper forms. And of course, this makes sense um, when we have a system that um, is based on the paper forms and the existing clinical workflow that makes for a much easier implementation. Um, you're not disrupting the way people work. You're already collecting data that we know is important to people because they've been using these paper forms um, and the implementation um, can be successful. The gap we're finding is that um, being able to access that data and turn it into these very useful reports for clinicians, for clinical managers um, is slow. People aren't sure how to do that and we're not able to get the value that uh, our stakeholders are asking for from the data that's collected. So we've tried recently to take a, a somewhat different approach. So what we are doing with, um, with our uh, clinicians and managers, um, we find out what do they want to know? What is the reporting that they want? We define, and this can be external reporting from the Ministry of Health, from PEPFAR, um, and we break that down into the particular statistics, analytics, and other record, uh, reporting requirements that they have. We go through this backward design process that we break this down in particular indicators and define them break that down into attributes and really come up with the structure of tables that we would want to have to then use what we use, which is Power BI to come up with the reporting. So without looking at you know, the clinical data collection or the paper, we just say, what do we want to get um, this reporting in the, in the end? So we have then these requirements um, for what kind of SQL tables we wanna end up with. And then our process for designing the system um, then is informed by both the clinical, the existing clinical data collection and the clinical workflow and the needs for data use. So we have um, a, a broader group uh, from our teams working together. Um, we have our, uh, of course, informatics team, we have clinicians and our monitoring and evaluation colleagues working together um, to both have input into what data needs to be collected and how it needs to be collected. So in particular, um, you know, knowing the data that we want out of the system, there's often some request for maybe additional data, for data collected in a slightly different way in order to avoid data quality issues, um, for asking for certain validations or for things to be required um, and those kind of things that will make the data easier to use. 
And then of course we can implement the data collection um, as we usually have. And then along with that, um, we use um, a pedal, the Pentaho, uh, sorry, Pentaho-based ETL to create a SQL data source uh, of this data. And then we use Power BI to create our reports. So we end up with a system that's meeting both needs, um, the clinical use and the reporting use um, that our clinical colleagues are asking for. That's it, I'm happy to have questions. Okay, great. Uh, you just had a few more seconds, uh, but uh, you're good. Any, you can uh, definitely post questions. Okay, Bak has a question. You can, yeah, and time is up. You can post the question on the chat. Um, Bak? All right. Um, the next, uh, we have um, Ikapule on patient queue management model implementation in a busy urban area ART clinic. Uh, thank you very much, Christine. Uh, good evening to everyone. So if you've... Uh, been to an art clinic with uh, an appointment uh, numbers greater than 200, you'd understand the anxiety of many of the clients uh, who get worried that some of their fellow clients are jumping the queue. So that uh, gave us an idea of coming up with a queue management system, which would address some of these challenges that the clients uh, raise, and then uh, address some of the reports that we are interested in as a as an organization so this is built on top of uh uganda emr which is a customization of open mrs we did uh have a few developers come up with the system this module so once uh this is built on top of a point of care once a client uh, is checked in at the reception they automatically queued into the waiting list. We see that we have a waiting list at triad, the clinician area, counseling, and laboratory and pharmacy. So each of these uh, service points has a, a point of care at, uh, provider. So the clients, uh, once the client is selected, then we can see uh, the serving at the art clinic, serving in the referral room one. So the clients move from the waiting list of the different service points to now serving in those particular service points. Uh, we have been conducting patient waiting time surveys and we thought with a point of care coming on board, this would be an opportunity for us to use that system to try and compute these times without having to run some independent survey, which again would cost us a lot of money. So as a part of this, we did customize some reports that uh, would answer some of these questions that uh, we were interested in. Uh, I'll jump straight into the some of the reports we're generating using this. So we have some of our, this is one of the reports we generate, service point, performance evaluation report. This is looking at the different uh, service points, uh, how many providers are in that area, how many clients were seen in that particular area on a given day, the total waiting time, and then the total service time. This uh, gives us a, a snapshot on, on that kind of time, how much time the clients are spending within the clinic, uh, how long are they waiting? And then when they are interacting with the provider, how much time are they spending with the provider? So we do have another uh, report, which is now looking at the providers, uh, the location of the provider and uh, outputs. 
So you're able to track down how many clients were seen by a particular provider, at what service point are they located? Uh, yes. Uh, we also have a, a summary of the patient queuing report. This is now looking at individual clients on a particular visit day. How much time did they spend within the clinic? When did they check in, when did they check out? Which are directly uh, feeds into what we've been doing uh, previously, the entire patient waiting time surveys. This is a, we do not need to incur any extra cost in conducting this. The point of care uh, coupled with the key management module does that for us. So we're able to look at when was the client checked in and when did they leave the, cl the clinic? So we're able to compute how much time they spent within the clinic. Uh, this particular report also has components of the specific uh, service areas. How much time does a client spend at triage? How much time they spend at the lab? How long do they take interacting with the clinician? So this is also a summary of uh, just one of the service areas. That is the clinician's room. So you look at the client, when was the client, uh, when are they checked in into that, uh, the waiting area? When were they picked by the clinician? How long was the interaction between the clinician and the patient? And then we compute all those waiting time and the service time. So we, this is a pilot uh, that we are running in one facility. And so we have a number of challenges. Although the one that uh, clearly comes out, we did incorporate a, a voice uh, an announcer uh, who notifies clients that uh, client number this and this you you're next to be served in this point at this point but uh, the voice options we have currently uh, from I would say Europe which a bit hard to comprehend for some of the clients we are trying to find a way of uh, incorporating local languages into this uh, thank you very much Any questions? Um, thank you so much. Uh, the questions are being posted on the chat window. Um, so we can have a look at that as we continue. Thank you, Christine, and apologies for no all worries, no worries. Thank you. All right, next we have um, Jennifer. Uh, we'll be talking about growing community talent, cr um, creating a more meaningful professional development experience. Thank you, Christine, um, and thank you, everybody. What I want to talk to you about today is how we are growing community talent and creating and using our dev stages to create a more meaningful professional development experience. So there are two things that we've been doing in the last nine months that are really um, unlocking the potential for better um, supported professional development and self-driven professional development. The first thing is that we launched a fellowship program, something that we've been talking about for a long time. And through this fellowship program, we've actually had an opportunity to strengthen, start strengthening and expanding our open MRS stages so that they no longer focus simply on developer skills and community engagement skills, but now we're, we're actually going out into quality assurance skills, for instance. So here's, here's how the fellowship program kind of fits into our open MRS stages and professional development pathway, right? We usually have newbies come in. Um, a lot of newbies, especially right now, come in through Google Season of Code. And hopefully by the end, they go through and they become like maybe a dev, dev one, dev two. And our fellowship program is really designed to kind of bridge the gap between people who have started in the community and have kind of gotten to the dev two stage, but want to go actually even further. So building up our mid-level dev um, developer skill, um, developers, developer talent, and, and then putting them on the pathway to become a dev four and a dev five. The question that we've been kind of been grappling with over the last nine months in this though, is what can actually make this professional development through the fellowship program easier? Um, and there are three things that I, I think we've really honed in on. One, a clear roadmap for advancement. How do you get from Dev 1, Dev 2, Dev 3 to Dev 4 to Dev 5? Um, easier access to learning resources that are actually linked to the skills 
that you would that you would build to progress through our dev stages. And then also having tools that are easy to use to track progress and help individuals advance through the different stages. So right here, you kind of see a, a quick snapshot of um, a worksheet that is based off of Burke's brilliant work, brainstorming our OMRS dev stages. And here you see kind of a, a laundry list of um, stages, areas, skills, expectations. Um, and what we've really been doing, what the fellow mentors and I have been really doing um, on, on almost a weekly basis is saying, well, what exactly are the skills that we, that we expect a Dev 5 to have? Um, how do we make sure that they're complete, that they're well-defined, and that they can actually be that roadmap that fellows need um, to know how well they're progressing, that mentors need to guide their progression, and that I think actually even individuals can use on their own to get from a Dev 1 to a Dev 2 to a Dev 3 to a Dev 4. So, so this is kind of the progression you can see here um, that we're trying to, to work with some examples of like maybe at the stage one, someone can identify what tests can be automated if they wanna be a, a QA stage one. And the, and the goal is that at the very end of it, they can design complex test infrastructure for imp an implementation. And we've been plotting out how you actually get to that, that stage five. Um, alongside this, we had the brilliant idea of well, what if we had a set of easy, you know, like easy to find resources that people could just go to and use so that they're not asking, you know, as many questions, they can go to a tutorial, um, do, watch a video, do some coding questions. And as we've been working with the micro front end squad on a getting started guide, we even see that this could be like a good deal of this could be actually embedded in a getting started guide. So um, the next thing that we're working on is actually creating an easier to use tool that will enable not only our fellows, but anybody in the community to develop a personalized learning plan and monitor their own progress. So that's where we are today. If anybody is interested in digging into the developer stages or helping us build out our QA stages, please come and join us. We've, uh, we've kind of informally found ourselves meeting Thursdays I think at uh, 5 p.m. UTC, there's usually an announcement on talk so, or in our what's happening um, each week on talk. So look, look out for an announcement there and contact me if you wanna join. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you Jennifer and you've just left 18 seconds to spare. All right, then we move on to our last one uh, by Sanjay. And uh, Sanjay will be talking about five-year journey with OpenMRS community and experiences. So Sanjay, welcome. Oh, sorry. Um, can you hear me? Um, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. This is Nisanze from Nepal. Um, uh, thank you for thank you community for providing me this opportunity to share my experience uh, since the last five years that I got from the community. Uh, to getting started with, uh, this is the day that I got connected with the community uh, five years back uh, that I got signed up with the OpenMS talk. And since then the journey started and got the opportunity to work with uh, the Ministry of Health in Nepal uh, during the DHS2 integration. Athortworks, Concare, Simprints, uh, a few of the implementations in Nepal in the rural sites. Uh, one of the challenging and one of the exciting uh, implementation that did uh, was the earthquake hit center uh, that was the epicenter during the 2015 um, earthquake. Uh, I also got the opportunity to work with the Uganda, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, and Bangladesh team. Uh, thank you all for the support that uh, uh, I got during the implementation at the uh, implementation sites in Nepal. Uh, a few of the other, other organizations that I work with is uh, Possible Health and self uh, Nepal as a community. Uh, Outside that, uh, some of the EDPs, external development partners like GIZ, was the 
uh, enhanced support that we, we got during the implementation of DHIS3 and insurance integration. Uh, these are the people, I'm so sorry, uh, I got very few uh, photos here that I got from my library, but definitely we all are together. Um, I thank you all for these awesome moments. Uh, uh, reflecting back to the first visit with Paul in Colombo, um, Jan, and all the team members out there. Um, definitely, I, it would be great for me to share all those photos, but I'm so sorry again. Uh, but these are the uh, these are the essence that I have got from the community. I'm so excited, and I'm always there with the community. Uh, so, what is the next step for us now uh, after the five years? Is uh, till now what we felt is the uh, the pain point for us is the implementation. Uh, engineer, engineers, uh, skilled engineers that uh, we always lacked. So the target now is to work with the Ministry of Health and the academic institution to build the uh, export team, let's say, or skilled manpower through the OpenMRS academic program, which we have aimed uh, to uh, have this session in 2021 um, at, at the end of this uh, month uh, April. Uh, as being the OpenMRS uh, Nepal community, we always uh, love to work with the new face, new uh, students, including the academic institutions and private companies. Uh, the other areas that we'd like to work on with is the health data security and the standardization that Dr. Devkota also mentioned that there are some policies that has already been built on and is in the queue at, in the world of the implementation. Uh, so this is the um, exciting news for us as a community from Nepal. Um, we recently got the opportunity to work with one of the largest academic institution, uh, and we have we are we had been in invited to as the uh, uh, OpenMRS uh, tutors that we 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 are uh, we have started the OpenMRS fundamental training for the students around 25 students who will be directly getting getting the knowledge about the. OpenMRS fundamentals as well as the implementation point that uh, we got to implement in the possible sites. Uh, now the rule is, uh, uh, we have got the extra rules for now. So the, uh, how we retain those 25 students going forward or, or how we align with the learning plan that recently Jane shared. So that is the new role for us. We will try to engage with the community directly. We'll try to connect those students directly to the community so that they can take the part as a contributor as well, uh, as well as the uh, key implementer for Nepal uh, and also support the in-country ecosystem, uh, minimize the implementation cost. Uh, some of the experience that we faced is uh, the, some of the implementation, or if, there were very few implementation, but th those all were the very expensive and we, we we aim to minimize the cost of the implementation, how we can um, make the sustainable implementation that will be the new areas that we always look into now. Uh, so that financially, we th there should be the way to uh, be sustained in the long run as well. So uh, the point that we will be carrying out is the capacity of the student community and support the uh, local ecosystem. Um, a few of the organizations that we are in touch with uh, who are supporting us to or to uh, disseminate the com uh, community information as well as providing the resources are Nepal EHR and a few of the colleges and other private entities. Uh, thank you for all those support by the, by the um, time that we are getting at the moment. Uh, so there are other miles to move on along with. Uh, besides the OpenMS, we, we expect to get the support from OpenLS, OCO, FIRE, OpenMS 3.0, BAMI, and Health Information Exchange. In, in terms of the uh, education, uh, basically uh, next year, our target is to connect with the multiple uh, academic institutions. So far, uh, uh, probably we'll go with few more academic colleges and uh, we try to uh, educate the students on this area and we are open to collaborate with all the community members, all the stakeholders, as well as all the organizations. So I look forward for for the next year to get in, engaged with the community activities mostly and support the Ministry of Health uh, in making the uh, dream of making the digital, digital Nepal uh, uh, successful, uh, uh, digital Nepal in a successful um, uh, way. So um, for any questions or if you want to reach out to me, uh, feel free. Uh, or uh, if you have any questions, just uh, I'm here. 
Thank you, Christine. All right. Thank you, Sanjay. All right. Um, and that got us covered for today's schedule.